I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Auckland, New Zealand. He's a lead consultant at Capgemini. He was first awarded as MVP in 2023, so relatively recently. He's a budding pianist, something that most of you don't know about him. He's the power effects guru that you all do know. You can find links to his bio, social media, etc., in the show notes for this episode. Welcome to the show, Nathan. Thanks so much, Mark. It's great to be here. Good to have you on the show. I feel like I just uh, talk to you every day in some form or some way. And so I, I was surprised when I see that uh, 2023 was, was when you awarded MVP, because I feel like you've been an MVP for ages. Yeah, that was the feedback from that I got uh, um, from the product team at Microsoft through um, my my MVP mentor was that they they also were like we thought he was one already. So yeah, so pro tip uh, if you're trying to be an MVP, it really helps if the product team already thinks you are one. So nice, nice. I always like to start with food, family, and fun. Um, what do they mean to you? Yeah, great question. So as you can tell by my accent, I'm not originally from New Zealand, although when I do go back to the States, everybody always says, oh my God, you sound like a Kiwi. Um, But you wouldn't say that. Um, So, But I've lived in New Zealand for 17 years now. Um, So most of my family is back in the States. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I do have a 16-year-old daughter here in Auckland who splits her time between her mom and me and just absolutely adore her, even though we are in those... those, uh, grumpy teenage years, but she is, uh, she is my world. Um, when I'm not doing my power platform thing, i um, really involved um, with my local church, just serving and loving local community here in South Auckland. Um, and food, man, I'm always down for a cheeky burger or coffee with friends. Nice. Nice. I like it. And yeah, I've known you've been in in Auckland for a long time because way back in the day, I think Business Mechanics, were you working for them from? Yeah, I worked for BMX. Um, I think actually the first time we met, I think was when, because I used to be in sales before I you know, got into my whole power platform thing. Um, but I, I did a stint at Microsoft in sales, and I think it was actually Paul Bowkett that introduced us in the lobby there at Microsoft. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I'm pretty sure that was how we met. Tell me about your story of becoming a consultant. Like you said, you were in sales. What was that journey for you? At what point did you decide that, you know, you wanted to, to, double down on the power platform? Yeah, great question. So, yeah, so I worked in corporate sales for 10 years. Um, It took me that long to work out that I was terrible at it. But if you ask any of my former bosses, they'll tell you that I was just not a salesperson. Um, um, Yeah, I'm I'm quite extroverted. I love mixing it up with with clients and people. But I guess I got to the point where I realized I was tired of begging for my job every quarter because, you know, I wasn't making quota. I'm more interested in actually solving the problem. And so what I did was I, I said, you know, I think actually being a business analyst is what I really want to do. And so I identified the transferable skills and moved into a, a business analyst type role. And I did that for a few years, um, always working around Dynamics 365 type projects. Um, and then um, I got introduced to the Power Platform in 2019. And that just, it was like a bomb went off in my life and it lit a fire um, 
that I just, it never went out. So um, in 2019, um, so I was working for a, a global manufacturer that has a presence here in New Zealand. And um, we got to be part of the private preview for what we now know today as Copilot Studio. At the time, it was called Virtual Agent. And um, so I got to get hands on with this thing. And the first thing, first thing I did was said, you know, what, let's hook this up to Dynamics and get it playing around with cases and, and that type of thing. Um, I was later told by some of the more responsible people in my organization that it probably wasn't the smartest thing to do without an authentication wall. But, you know, the beauty of, uh, of experimental and preview products and features is we get to work out what's possible and then walk it back to what's responsible. But uh, I had just amazing engagement from the um, Power Virtual Agent team at Microsoft. And because, um, I mean, I, like I had to learn everything. I had to learn Power Automate. There weren't connectors to Virtual Agent. So I literally had the product team at Microsoft writing JSON for me and I had to learn what JSON was. and um, but it just, you know, and it took me two weeks to write my first flow. Um, but the learning curve was just crazy because, you know, I went from kind of two weeks to write a flow to being able to do it in 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, it just, it was amazing. We got to go to Atlanta to the last um, Microsoft Business Application Summit before COVID. We got to be part of the um, um, customer advisory forum and, and meet with, meet with these um, product managers from Microsoft in person. It was an incredible experience. And yeah, it just lit a fire in me. And then I was like, you know what? I want to do this full time. And here I am now. Awesome. Awesome. And so what year did you join CAP? So I joined through Intergen. So I, I joined in 2021. So I was there for kind of the last 12 months of Intergen. Um, we, we got acquired in a I joined in September. We got acquired in November, and then in July of 2022, that's when the complete rebrand happened, and and we're now, um, you know, completely branded Capgemini and part of that larger group. Yeah, amazing. Now, you know, you've you've created a name for yourself in the industry around Power FX, which I think is amazing because I think you're the only person that I see index heavily on power fx and it's such a it was your idea man thank you <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us about yeah why you went down the power fx path and and what has that opened to you by really carving that bit of space out for you in the power platform ecosystem yeah so i guess first we need to walk it back to um the last mentoring challenge that you ran before the current one in 2022 and i was fortunate to be part of that. And you mentioned in one of the sessions that you didn't see a lot of content around power effects. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make that my thing. And so I just dove in, started learning it. Um, I initially focused on the model-driven app and modern commands, and it's just expanded out since to um, um, plugins and columns and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it just... I don't know. It just, it's my love language. It just kind of gets me and I get it. And um, yeah, but it, um, I guess in terms of the journey to MVP, um, I always say, you know, there's no shortcuts, but sometimes there's express routes. And um, if there, if there's an area where there's really not a lot of, a lot of content and it's something that Microsoft is, is heavily invested in, probably a good idea to, to get involved there um you know i'm you know if, if i wanted to you know i probably can't add anything in terms of like customer insights journeys compared to um megan walker or power automate you know we've got mcj here at capgem or um you know jerry weinstock or eliza some of the you know kind of the you know the big names in, in power automate um but um yeah power effects was you know there was kind of this brief period where nobody was talking about it. And so, yeah, I just picked it up and ran with it. But again, it was your idea, man. So thank you. Um, shout out to the 90 day mentoring program. Thank you, sir. Listen, I want to unpack your journey in power effects and the re and, and I want to do it from this point of view is that there are people out there in the community that go, you know, what could I become known for? But like, what are the, what's the practicalities of that? And, and, you know, in the 90 day mentoring challenge, we covered the whole 
If you're going to index on here, I think I give Jerry Weinstock as an example, who was very heavily in the Dynamics 365 arena. And then along came Flow back in the day, now called Power Automate. And he decided to learn everything he could about it. Now, if I was to unpack your journey and and let's say you were advising somebody else and let's say they were going to pick up, um, let's say they're going to pick up um, uh, Copilot Studio, just as an example, right? And although Copilot Studio right now in its current iteration is kind of indexed more on um, what we had with chatbots and power virtual agents, if you were going to define a 12-month schedule of of really diving deep into a specific product, based on your experience with PowerFX, how do you how do you do that? If you're looking for a structured way to enhance your career in Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform, this is for you. Enrollment for the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge April to June cohort are now open. I discovered MS CRM in 2003 and it changed the course of my life. My career in Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform has taken me all over the world and the opportunities for people to build a career in the space today are better than ever. The 90 Day Mentoring Challenge will help you chart a path to capitalize on these opportunities and build the skills for greatness. Find out more at ako.nz365guy.com. For the first time, I'm limiting space on this cohort for a more intimate experience. So if you want to be part of it, don't wait. Enrollment will close on the 25th of March. Podcast listeners can use the code PODCAST for a 10% discount at checkout. Yeah, so the the first thing you need to do, and this is the most important thing, is you just have to get started. Um, there's a brilliant quote that I read um, earlier this, uh, late last year. I think I think it's in uh, Rick Rubin's book, um, The Creative Act. Uh, I might be mistaken, but it's it basically the quote is: "Modern art equals I could have done that plus yeah, but you didn't." So the reality is, I haven't done anything special. Anybody could do what I do. Um, um, I just I chose to get going. So if if uh, you said, "Hey, I want to I want to make a name for myself in Copilot Studio," just get started. Just do your thing. Um, yeah, when I look at my content from 12 to 24 months ago, like it's terrible, it's embarrassing, but you know, um, we move on, we keep going, we learn, we grow. Um, the next thing I would do is I would say, just bring yourself to it. Um, you know, it's the, the beauty of, of getting to create content around these awesome products is you really get to bring a lot of your own personality and yourself to it. And so just do what comes naturally to you. Um, make the videos that you would want to see. Um, one of the, one of the complaints that I had early in my journey before becoming an MVP was, gosh, a lot of this content glosses over so much of the process. Like here's the three steps to do this. And it's like, it's not three steps. It's like 40. Um, but you've glossed over it. And so I like to, I make the video for me, like, Hey, if I've never um, touched this before, how would I do it? And so that, that's the way I try to come across in my content, but you know, you just make the video, make the video, write the blog post, um, make the content that you would want to see that would be helpful for you. Cause I guarantee you, if it's helpful for you, it's going to be helpful for somebody else. What was your decision around the medium? um that you chose like you mentioned video there and blog posts etc did you decide that you know the the video was going to be the way you're going to do it Uh, or you know like why did you choose that over let's say doing a podcast on on power effects just dedicated what or or just you know using um you know blog only or written word only what was your your thinking your your choice around what was going to be your main distribution um, created in content, that type of thing? That's a great question. Um, so the simple answer is I didn't. Um, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not a big kind of planner. I just go out there and just get started. Um, the best career advice I ever got was just go out and get your nose bloodied. And so that's just kind of the way I approach the world. Um, but I started out doing videos. I used to blog a long time ago, not so much about um, dynamics or technical things, but just 
um, when I was in sales, I used to blog. What I found is even some of the best bloggers and writers, um, as I get older, I just don't have the attention span to read through it all. Um, it's just, it's a tough one. Um, and I'm a reader. I, I love to read, but I just, I just don't have the attention span for it. Um, and so I, I did, I started out with videos cause I just didn't have any other ideas. So I just did it. Um, and I still do videos. I find that video, um, I mean, even I struggle to watch it. Like I, I, I get kind of grumpy when people send me a video clip, like just send me the meme, you know, um, so I can look at it, laugh and move on. But um, yeah, um, which, which is, is kind of ironic coming from the guy who's dropping videos on LinkedIn all the time. But, um, um, but what I have found is, is by taking the time to subtitle them, there are times where I will start watching a video and if the subtitles and it interests me, then I will watch it through. Um, so, so I do that. Um, the one thing, and I've noticed you've started doing this recently, is carousel posts. So I get crazy engagement from the carousel posts. And what I noticed was, hey, I like these things. I love that I can flick through them really quickly, capture the idea. And so I started doing those in late 2022. Um, they, um, The first one took me several hours to do. I can do them pretty quickly now. I mean, it's, it's insane. Like you can bang it out in 20 minutes and if I do a power effects one or something like that, I'll, you know, like I'll see, you know, like the stats go crazy, new followers. It's insane. Um, so I, I've, I've pulled back from it a bit. I like to um, do video just because it gives you more of a three dimensional sense of who I am. So what I really enjoy doing is, is getting on stage at events and whatnot. And I'd like to do more of that. And so, so I, I use the video to to show a bit more of myself to try and try and move into that space. Nice. Tell me about your tools. What software are you using? Camera, you know, recording software. What's what's the, a lot of people want to know kind of that type of detail. What is it for you? Yeah, man, this is so embarrassing. So um, I um, so if I'm doing a just one of my, I joke about my Fitspo's videos on LinkedIn, but if it's one of my just videos where I'm talking, literally I just record myself on my iPhone. Um, if I'm doing a, a demo, I set up a meeting with myself and teams and record myself and teams. Um, it's probably not the highest quality, but it's just how I do it. So um, I guess the message out there is just get started and do, like you have the tools now. Um, so um yeah, I use Canva pretty heavily. I probably should start paying for it, but I'm still in the free version. Um, I, um, yeah, so I, I use Canva for all of my carousel posts. I use it to edit my videos. Um, I haven't bitten the bullet for any subtitling AI yet. Um, I do that by hand, but it does take quite a bit of time. So I'm starting to say, you know, it's probably worth paying for something like that. So, yeah, but but yeah, very simple toolkit. So really nothing special. This is so cool. Tell me about distribution then. You mentioned LinkedIn. Is it only LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm predominantly on LinkedIn. I occasionally drop some of my other videos through Facebook or Instagram, um, but most of my following is on LinkedIn. Um, I do have a blog that I set up as as part of my MVP journey. I haven't updated it for a while. Um, yeah, most of my engagement just seems to come through LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, at some point, I, I probably need to look at setting up some kind of website or personal site so that people can connect with my content and find it a bit better. Yeah. So nothing on YouTube? Oh, yeah. I do have a YouTube channel. So sorry. I um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't have a lot of followers, um, but when, I'm, when I record my more technical demos, I do like to put them there because then it's, it's easily found. Um, and I have I've heard that some of my videos do make the rounds through uh, through the product group at Microsoft. So, so yeah, YouTube is a fantastic tool for for keeping your content uh, content there. So, why did you choose to index on LinkedIn? Great question. I um, I had just always kind of been a big LinkedIn user. I was one of the early adopters of the the blogging on LinkedIn when that came out. And so I had just kind of always built a following there and yeah, LinkedIn just kind of seemed to work for me. Um, yeah, I do. I have been thinking that, yeah, I probably should explore some other avenues in terms of 
reaching people. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn has just always kind of worked for me. Nice. Are you going to run out of topics to talk on in PowerFX? In theory, you could. But what I found is the more content you create, it just opens this torrent of creativity. Um, I, it was crazy because I took a couple weeks off over the holidays um, when I was was visiting my family. And it's really hard to get started again from that place of, of, of stasis. Um, but in the last few weeks, I've just found that the ideas just keep coming. You know, you get great questions from the community and you're like, I didn't think of that. That sounds like a great idea um, or just stuff you're trying. And I guess the other thing that I would share is that everything is material. The thing you want to try, the demo you want to try and build is material. If it works, that's material. If it doesn't work, that's material. Um, if it's impossible, that's material. Like you can use all of it. I mean, there are times where I've had to go out and say, hey, this isn't the post that I wanted to share, but this is what I wanted to do. And it doesn't do that right now. And yeah, it's so it's, it's all material. So um, I guess in theory, you could run out of stuff to talk about with PowerFX, but if you're really in there mixing it up, probably not. Yeah. I love it. As in, it, I love that you can take a topic and you can really um, cut it up and slice it up so many different ways, whether it's finding the bugs in it, whether it's um, finding, oh, I didn't know that, you know, the, the light bulb moments, whether it's um, uh, doing something to address a, a community question, right? That, hey, let me show you how to do that. And as you say, if it doesn't work, that's that's great content as well because it shows how it, it, you know, it can't be done. We wouldn't have, you know, all the story around Edison, the light bulb and stuff without all the failures. And I think that so many people in the community want to only look polished and only look at the end result. And it's actually the journey. I mean, um, one of the creators that I really like, um, Gary V or Gary Vanderchuk, he is just like, listen, if you would just chuck a video on and, when about your day, people would watch that, right? Because people want to see how you do stuff. And um, it's not so much about, you know, yes, in time you get better, right? You you know how to use the software better. You know how to create the hook better. You know how to drive the value better. But nothing beats just getting going, right? And, and, and getting that momentum, you know? I always say, was it a law of physics that a... a uh, a vehicle under motion is easier to move than a stationary vehicle, right? And guiding it. And I've tried to look it up, but I don't think it is a law of physics. But anyhow, if you listen to this, correct me if, uh, if, if, if I'm wrong. But I, I thought I, I learned it in school. Um, that aside, final word, Nathan, um, to folks thinking that uh, they'd like to become an MVP. What's your advice? My advice is just get stuck in and do it. Um, it's an amazing journey. Um, I will echo. So you had Paul Stork on recently and I, I sent him a connect on LinkedIn and a message. And I was like, man, everything you said was a hundred percent my journey. So, um, if you, if you get, um, right before I became an MVP, I was at the point where I was like, you know what, if this never happens, I've already won the things I've learned, the stuff I've gotten to do, the people that I've met, like, this is awesome. This is the victory. And then at that point, the fireworks popped and it was like, hey, we think you'd be a good MVP. Um, but yeah, so I would say, I mean, everybody starts out wanting to be an MVP, but um, along the way, you learn that the real the real win is the community and the things you learn. And so if you just get stuck in and, and start start going for it, amazing things will happen. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time.
Before you go, a quick reminder that the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge kicks off on the 1st of April. Every cohort, I hear people say that surely this group has been the best one ever. The true magic of the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge is the connections formed between a group of people who are committed to learning with and from each other. Will you be part of the best cohort yet? Use the code PODCAST for 10% off at checkout. Visit ako.nz365guy.com to see a detailed curriculum and hear what past participants have to say about the challenge. I can't wait to help you discover the unique value you bring to the community and just how far you can take your career.